Hi Claire's, it's your girl Court.is.claire and welcome to my channel Court.is.claire. For all you new viewers out there, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the Claire tribe, honey. And to all my Claire's out there, hey girl. Um, don't forget to hit that notification bell and so you can get the updates because my goal for 2019 is to provide weekly content. And you know my content is multi-layer, honey. We're going to be talking lifestyle, nursing, finances, beauty, fashion. So go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button. This particular video, first of all, if you see me in the scrub top, this is a OG nurse talk video. I'm here to just share my information with you that I've learned um, over the years and to help you hopefully be a better nurse and better have better practices as a nurse but um and it's just my experience this is no rules no no any of that it's just tips and tricks of the trade especially for my new nurses I know it can be hard to be in this profession so I hopefully I can be serve as a buffer um so this particular video is about documentation I'm going to give you five documentation tips five maybe a couple of bonuses I'm I don't know. We'll see how, how time is on my video. But at least five tips to help improve your documentation. Um, so if you are interested, go ahead, stay tuned, and we're going to get into it. Okay, so let me go ahead and perfect, start this video off by saying... I am, this is a disclaimer, I am no way a professional, a guru, or, well, I am a professional, but I'm no guru. I do not supersede your facilities, policy, and protocol. That is what you should follow. Whatever institution that you work at, follow your policy and procedures because that is what is going to stand up behind you in a court of law. I'm going to be quite frankly honest with you, honey child. I will not be standing next to you if you are summoned or subpoenaed. However, I will be sending my prayers to you. Hopefully, with your policy, procedures, and protocol, and with these tips, you can... You will be all right. You won't never have to be subpoenaed. But this is a disclaimer, honey. I, I am not an attorney. I am just a regular Douglas Schmegler nurse who's trying to just share my, share my, share my wealth of knowledge. Okay, so let's get into it. Tip number one. Start and end your shift with notes. So when I say that, sometimes nurses just come in and feel like if they do their first assessment, that's just enough documentation. But I have come accustomed, become accustomed to starting my shift off with notes. So for instance, if you have done morning rounds, patient received, and this is for like a walkie-talkie patient, Patient received in no apparent distress, um, moving all extremities times four, uh, awake alert oriented times four, bedside report received from such and such. And when you end your shift, oh, bedside received from such and such, comfort and safety measures in place. Okay? That should open the note. In the end, your ending note should be um, patient in no apparent distress. Comfort, um, awakener oriented times four, moving all extremities times four, comfort and safety measures in place, bedside report given to such and such. But oh, let's, something that I like to do at the end on my end notes is if the patient came in for a specific reason, say they came in for a chest pain, at the end of my shift or in the beginning of the shift, I will put no chest pain at, noted at this time or patient denies chest pain at this time and I will say that at the end of my shift if that's the case. But always address the admitting diagnosis, okay? Which leads me, well, not leads me, but my second tip is whenever you make a note, especially when it is pertaining to the patient, so say you are saying, doctor at the bedside, I always will put comfort and safety measures in place. And when you address that, you're saying the patient is not in any pain, the bed is in the lowest position, um, the, the um, railing is up per protocol, and the call bell is in reach. That's what you're saying when you put comfort and safety measures in place. Some people like to put um, call bell in reach bed in lowest position some people like to spell it out some people like to say no pain no um safety barriers however you word it always address comfort and safety measures when you're putting document when you're making doc documentation on a patient or any type of patient interaction um my 
Third tip is always chart your eyes and nose. And this is important, especially if you are talking about a patient who is um came in for a came in with a diagnosis of active losses. So when I say or active fluid losses, if the admitting diagnosis is nausea and vomiting, vaginal bleeding, um, gastroenteritis, diarrhea, something of the sort where the patient is having an, an active fluid loss, you should be charting your eyes and nose. There should be no reason why somebody is saying vaginal bleeding and you don't have a pad count or you don't have an emesis count for a nausea and vomiting patient or even a note at the end of, you know, no, um, no vaginal bleeding noted. Morning assessment, just you need to address your eyes and nose. We all need to address our eyes and nose because it gives a better clinical picture. So this I found very pertinent, um, a very pertinent tip because as I'm a utilization review nurse, if you don't know, but I review charts all day and sometimes the physician will say, oh, patient had emesis today. Well, that doesn't give me anything, a leg to stand on. He could, he could say that, but there's no actual documented emesis as far as counts. So if, when I look in the nursing documentation for I's and O's, there is no emesis there. And so when it comes back to, when it, your patient could have been sick as a dog. You could have been working all day, get, giving the um the kidney basin, all those things to try to give it um, Zofran, giving this and giving that, but no emesis were noticed. So it's like, what you giving it for? Or it hasn't been addressed in a note. So I'm just saying to make sure your eyes and nose are recorded. You know what, you guys? I'm not sure. I would like to know, are nursing schools still preaching eyes and nose? Is that still a big deal in nursing school? Because when I was coming up, that's what it was a big deal. My um, nursing instructor used to say, your mantra used to be daily weight, eyes and nose, daily weight, eyes and nose. And I rarely see them do daily weights. But anyway, I digress. Eyes and nose, please just do your best to document them and even if you have a walkie talkie patient and they're in maybe for something that has nothing to do with an active fluid loss just say hey sir did you have a bowel movement today or did you have a um ha did you void did you urine today and they say oh yeah i urine two times oh yeah i did um i did number two two times so you go ahead you just put that in your um urine count stool count per patient and you're done but it, it makes your chart and look holistic when you add these things to it. And it's not just like a little skimpy run through assessment. And that's all you have documented for the day. Um, which leads me to my fourth tip. Document any pertinent conversations. So if you talk to the doctor, if you call the lab, the lab calls you family education, patient education, refusal of meds, axillary staff interaction, you need to document. If you are supposed to be given metoprolol, low pressure, and the patient doesn't want it because it gives them a headache, don't just hit refusal on the MAR. Go and put a note and say, hey, patient refused. Um, metoprolol says it gives, it gives the patient a headache, patient educated on the benefits of medication, patient continues to refuse. Guess what? If something happens later on in life or later on and the patient has a stroke because he wasn't, but he was in the hospital, he was, his blood pressure wasn't controlled, whatever the case may be, when they look at the chart and they look at when you took care of the patient, they will say, well, hey, Courtney was, um, offering it to him and educating him, but he said no. But if you don't have that anyway, you just hit refusal. Nobody knows what happened. Did you educate the patient? Did you um, try to be an advocate for your patient to get him to take this med? If you don't document, we all know. If you do not document, it was not done. We all know that as nurses. So make sure that you document that type of refusal. Or even if they have a PT, OT, speech therapy, any type of interaction, Go ahead and jot that down on in your notes because that keeps a tab of what's going on today and lets anybody who's auditing your chart know that you are on top of your patient. And you do not, let me say this, you do not have to write a whole long story or, you know, some nurses tend to over chart, but you do have to just put little tidbits in to show that you are on top of your, your patient. Um, so this brings me to my tip number five. Boop, boop, boop. All 
always, I know this may sound generic, but always, always, always chart a head-to-toe assessment. And I know some of the ED nurses, they kind of like, uh, roll their eyes at that. But listen, you need to chart some type of head-to-toe assessment that you even assess your patient. If you work in the ED, and I know this because I used to work there, they would say, oh, we only focus on abdominal pain. We only focus on if it was a gunshot, this and that. But I'm telling you, you should do a quick little something, something if you are in the ED. My floor nurses, my med search tele nurses, you should have a head, full head to toe assessment once per shift. And that is, that is just generic nursing. Make sure you have your head to toe assessment. And something that I used to throw in, and y'all let me know if y'all do this too, is that say if the patient came in and they may have had like cellulitis. So in the beginning, of course, you're going to open up your assessment and address the cellulitis and really like put your documentation there. But also on the flip side, at the end of your shift, address the problem. You should maybe go in in the assessment field. If you don't want to write it out, click and see and, and document how you see the extremity or how you see whatever the issue is. Put an ending note to that too. So that way they know that you assess your patient more than once and they weren't just walking around all loose and just having a great day and you really didn't assess like you should have. You know, you, you were on top of your patient and you, you're trying to show if there's an improvement, if there's a decline. All that stuff is document when it's documented, it gives a clear clinical picture of what we as nurses do. Um, so, I also, I'm going to give an extra little tip. Read your orders. Read your orders because sometimes it gets lost in the sauce. Let's just be clear. So, you may have neuro checks ordered, but you didn't get a report. You didn't get time to do a chart check. Matter of fact, if you go and you watch my old, my first video, Surviving Your First Nursing Ship, or my other nurse video, I'll have it in the links below. If, or in the comment box below if you go see that I talk about a nurse brain in the nurse brain um, you want to write down different things that happen with your patient but also in that video it talks about checking your orders and why I say read your orders because if you don't document neuro checks Q4 hours or strict INOs because it was ordered and you did not do it you are being negligent you are not doing the uh, you're not fulfilling the doctor's orders and that could be an issue for you if anything were to happen especially you know you have some physicians it's when they're trying to um do fluid loss balance and all that stuff and you have not charted charted your eyes and nose and maybe you didn't know because you didn't get in a report and you didn't check your orders that's gonna be a problem because trust me he's gonna go to the charge nurse the charge nurse gonna take it up and up depending on what's the chain of command in your facility so always always check your orders and i'm gonna tell you a story this has happened to me and this has nothing to do with documentation but why it's good to check your orders is when i first started off as a nurse on my work med search telly and the night nurse they were responsible for doing a full 24 24 hour chart check and back then we used to have the physician's orders in a chart and um, the unit secretary or the nurse used to transcribe those to the computer. So we did not have CPOE. And the night nurse would do the chart check. So I guess, and when you had a medication, you had to fax it down to the pharmacy. So I guess somewhere it got lost in the sauce and this patient was supposed to get Tylenol, Q4 hours, PRN. But it was a routine med on her chart. And the night nurse didn't catch it and I didn't catch it. But so thank God, nobody was giving the the med at all. We just were not giving it. We were just putting refusal. And so... We got pulled into the office, but thank God that it was not a medical error. So we just kind of like had some education to, you know, education for us. But it taught me the lesson to always check my chart orders because guess what? If I had checked my orders at least 24 hours, I would have caught it myself and would have rectified the situation and we wouldn't have had to been in that position. So I'm just telling you, make sure you check your orders before you get your day started because if you miss that in your documentation, it could be an issue. So with that being said, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the job box, the job box. Let me know in the comment box if this was helpful. Um, also let me know if you want any more content about nursing and any more jewels that I can give to you. If you have any questions or concerns, just go ahead and drop them in the comment box. But I want to leave you with this as I do with all my videos. Love you. 
But God, he loves you so much more. God bless you.